Which is Bloodstone, obviously not the thing you want to uh, there we go. Best hero in the game picked. Easy. Well, Witch Doctor. Yeah, I agree, Wagger. <laughs> yes. Totally Witch Doctor. I love that hero, dude. I think TA's had like a really high win rate. Yeah, uh, she's 10 and 6. I believe. Nah, I really like this this combination. We talked about the lion, and now with the TA, that gives you, you know, we talk about the bristle wisp primarily. That's going to be your core going into that mid to late game. But in in lion and TA, you've got two more heroes that can just relocate and blow somebody up. Yeah, we saw that in the. I can't remember which game was the TA just crit down the entire enemy team. It was absolutely RTZ. disgusting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, RTZ had a very, very nice TA game. And another team that has played it extremely well is C-Deck with Shiki, yes. who has performed really well on that hero as well. So uh, some teams to look out for. But it's uh, going to be interesting to see MVP run in here as well. Empire really likes damage right now. Like, they have good control, I think, with Witch Doctor and Winter Wyvern. But no way to like kill a Bristleback. No way to knock Refraction Charges off the Templar Assassin easily, I guess, aside from Winter's Curse. Uh, and, yeah, I don't really know how they're going to get past this Bristleback front line at the moment. I mean, they did pick two supports already, though. They're going to add a carry and an offlaner, so you can always look for that to stack in some damage. I would still be happy to see the Timbersaw that we mentioned in this game, because there's only Lion for Disables. The rest of them really can't deal with the Timbersaw. And you know it's most likely going to be a dual lane in the safe lane because of the Wisp. Yeah. Mm. Could you just get something for Empires, just to any hero that builds a Silver Edge that kind of fits, trying to get rid of that passive of Bristleback, would that be a reasonable counter here or not? Yeah, it is a very good thing to have the Silver Edge. It just takes quite a while before you can farm it. But yeah. if you can get that, that makes uh, Queen of Pain's job a lot easier, as she can just go in. Okay, and uh, okay, maybe not through the Razor, but still a very good counter, as you can steal the damage. And of course, your ulti is super good. Yeah, I mean, more than likely, uh, the silent safe lane hero here on the Razor probably looking for that matchup, as you said, through the Bristleback. I mean, that's just one, you know, Bristleback's a hero that needs to be in a fight, need to be in the mix over time. And of course, if he gets that link on him, yeah. it forces him to either back or really try to fight with very reduced damage output. So and at the end of this fight, it could just be Razor and Bristleback toe to toe. Everybody else is dead. It definitely could be. And likewise, Razor is also a pretty good hero to steal damage from Templar Assassins. So they have, uh, they have started to build in some damage into their lineup, Merlini. But do you think this, what do you think they lack as a last pick here for Yoku? I still think they lack a little bit of damage. Razor is generally built as a super frontline tank with like mech, shivas, and AC for like plus 40 armor. And I think that's really good for MVP Phoenix's lineup because they don't actually have that much magic damage right now. So I think he is really good to draw attention away from his other teammates and to keep the bristle back at bay. I like the pick. But yeah, I think they like damage. Yeah. Well, they still have one more hero to ban out as well before that. MVP Phoenix looking pretty complete in their setup right now. Do you have enough control here, I'm wondering, to put uh, Yoki on the Queen of Pain off lane and, do, uh, and draft a primary damage dealer mid? It is a possibility. I always like to see when Resolution plays the Queen of Pain himself, uh, but they could always go into that option. Oh, Brute was still available. That is curious that... I didn't notice she uh, actually was all the way in the fifth ban. Huh. Could have been a great pick actually for uh, MVP during the second phase. But yeah, sorry to go back to your question. I think that would make it for a little bit safer lanes. But having Racer, they could also just uh, also just dominate two lanes with that. Wow, that damage though. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, uh, the burst damage out, but literally, you know, obviously the Bristle Wisp we talked about, but these are three heroes that can just relocate and instantly blow somebody up. Yeah, and the Cold Embrace is not going to save you that much exactly. anymore. It, sure, it saves you from TA and Bristleback to a point, but now Lion and Lina in the mix, they will happily take your, you know, hold position spell so that Lina can just nuke. Yeah, and it's worth noting that it's actually been uh, the, the, the most common Queen of Pain player for Empire has actually been Silent. Recently, they mostly run at safe lane. Yeah, safe lane queen has been very popular during all of TI5, actually. During the group stage, it was popular life. So is this a Lena safe lane, or is it going to be Lena yeah. off? That's, this is, this is kind of what I expected to happen, that you needed, you needed a damage dealer mid, a mobility hero, and I think Storm fits the bill rather nicely. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is going to be curious. I think they... Uh, the lanes are really important, and both teams are going to mind game each other here. So I think the early scouting is super important. We'll see what they can do. OK, thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, mind games galore. Let's see how it all shakes out in our first game. In the lower bracket with OD Pixel and Syndrome.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first best of three here in the lower bracket. Team Empire up against the side of MVP Phoenix in a best of three, and uh, it's going to be quite a best of three as well. Phoenix, they've proven a lot over the games that we've seen them recently in TI. Now, Empire, of course, a massive name with a massive following. Yeah, I, uh, I do agree. I think the general consensus among the panel was that Empire going as favorites. They had a, a pretty good series against LGD yesterday where they actually had a... They had a shot at winning that series, let's be honest. They yeah, could have won the first close. game and they actually did win close. the second game. So uh, LGD looking like one of the strongest teams in the tournament right now. Uh, but MVP, like you said, they did overcome Newbie yesterday. And uh, they're in high spirits, which should not be underestimated. If you're, if you're feeling good about your team, if you're feeling confident, that can always give you that little bit of extra boost that you need to go in and win a match as underdogs. So uh, I'm just happy to see Io bristle. Absolutely. I, I agree 100%. I feel like this uh, this combo just doesn't get picked enough. It, team started figuring it out a little bit more and, and counterplaying it more, but MVP has had good success with this. It's the reason they're here, actually, I feel like, uh, as far as the wild card went, the IO Bristleback saved them, I think, two games in a row. At least once did they win an absolute key match with this, uh, to my memory, so... They're good at this. Yes, It's absolutely. one of March's best. The players. thing is, though, we've got to remember, they were talking a bit about the fact that Empire, they picked a lot of things that are very good against the yes. Ibris. So they've got the Witch Doctor, they've got the Wyvern, and of course, they've got the Razor, which is very nice against a Bristle, who likes to stick around in the front of the fights and run around. That's going to be an easy damage still with the Static Link for Razor, essentially. And in addition to that, they last picked the Storm, who is one of the best heroes against IO. You can always find the IO. Storm can, most of the time, simply just solo IO if there's no direct counterplay out of the stuns of MVP. And the only real counter they have that's reliable is Lion. So Nuts has to play a really good game here for uh, Resolution to not take off and just roll them over. Well, we're going to see both teams respectively grabbing themselves the rune. Io should have the straight up gold here thanks to that to the bottle. So we're going to have the bottle, of course, straight out for Io. So it's going to be a very nice start for Febby. And it's going to be interesting to see where Febby kind of hangs around at the beginning. Are you imagining we're going to see him just helping out Kyo in the mid lane before going up to, to join forces with the Bristle? Or where, where does Febby kind of position himself here in the early game? I think he might have to go top immediately to get something out of this off lane for the Bristle. If Bristle falls behind, well, maybe not. At least for now, they're going to hang around mid. I guess this is the idea for Empire by moving in uh, Aloha Dance here is to force the IO to stay. Uh, this is not what MVP want to happen because they they need a tough. March is actually already in a lot of trouble here. Just look at Sound laying into him. He's almost going to bring him down here. He will survive. Oh, Barely. one more last uh, hit onto him and would have brought him down. Yeah, indeed, March. Going to be able to salve himself back up. But as you said, this is not going to be the nicest lane here for the Bristol back. Mid lane, TA is going to be given that head start by Febby here with the bottle, trying to help him out CS Resolution here on the Storm. But at the same time, Resolution's got the backup there of that Wyvern. And then kind of left is this bottom lane where you're running the safe lane Lena, who's uh, of course being played by KP and trying to farm up against Yoku on the Quap, which essentially is another lane that I kind of feel is going to be quite hard for MVP to play against. Yeah, they're no matter how they, how well they play this bottom lane, they probably can't keep uh, Yoku entirely away. And for him to go in and get an early level six has huge implications on the IO's ability to be a hero in this game. Queen of Pain is a hero we didn't even mention. It's also very good against the IO. So Empire has put a lot of emphasis, like you said, onto counterpicking that element of MVP's draft. And all in all, just looking over the picks, I feel like what, what Empire has done really well is they've countered the physical parts of MVP's draft very well. The Bristle and TA are going to have a very hard time against the Winter's Curse as well as the Cold Embrace. But then again, they have a, a core Lina to try to compensate for that. Getting a lot of farm on a Lina is exceptionally good against Wyvern. Mid lane at the moment, QO, 11 for 6 against the 6 for 0 of Resolution. QO having an absolute great time here on the TA, really shutting down the Storm Spirit top lane. They're chasing down March and Silent. He's got a very, very good static link off here. 70 damage, 84 damage stolen. Feb, he could be in trouble. If he gets in range of Silent's right click to Will Aloha, does with the slow. They'll be able to find themselves first blood, and now they're going to look for more. The damage from Silent is just too much, and it's going to be a second kill there up at the top of the river here for the side of Empire. What a start there for the Dyer. Yeah, Febby had good intentions, but essentially just ended up getting himself killed in addition to March. I think if he doesn't tether, they will lose March. And uh, he wanted to try to bail out his buddy and, you know, the help a friend syndrome that gets you both killed. That's We see that from time to time in Dota. Teams have got a lot better at it than they were some years ago. Back then, it was very common to try to help a teammate who was in, like, ridiculous trouble and just get killed yourself. But it is, um, it's a thing. Bottom lane, Yoku just training hits there with Nuts, backs himself off. Has to be careful now, of course, Nuts, he's hit level two, so he's got 
both the Earth Spike and the Hex here. And combo with KP spells, they'd be able to do a good job at trying to burst down that Queen of Pain. Back towards the middle, Lower Dance coming to help out Resolution. And Resolution really does need help. I mean, 20 to 11 against 11 for zero. I mean, the Storm, he, he's got quite a way to catch up with the TA. Yeah. It's the only lane Empire really need to help, though. So they could easily even rotate both their supports in here to try and even get a kill on him if they felt like it was a possibility for Always Want to Fly as well as Lower Dance to do that. But instead, they're going to focus on top. March again being drained. Again, 70, 84 damage here. They're not going to die far enough, but... It's such a tough lane here for March. He still manages to find a fair bit of XP. Has hit level three. One CS. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the CS is, is certainly not there for the Bristle. Being healed up here by Febby with his ball. He's still distracting Silent decently, I guess you could say. Silent only sitting on 14 CS in the safe lane to the 20 of Lina because they spend a lot of time diving for these attempts at kills. And well, it's been two successful kills as well. So at least uh, they've accomplished that here. And QO is doing great. So, yes. as Nahas pointed out, QO is a very explosive player. He's got incredibly good stats uh, from his competitive games. Um, one thing to keep in mind about those stats, though, is, of course, how many of the games have been against extremely top tier caliber teams, right? A lot of uh, QO's games, of course, back from South Korea with a less competitive scene, so can skew the stats quite a bit there. I, I believe some of the stats were from there. That, that would. Yeah, I, I mean, if I, so, I think so. But, but I mean, the thing, of course, about it's Phoenix, no matter what. they've come to an international stage and proving that they can perform yes. on an international level. Absolutely. And standing up very nicely to some of the big teams. And of course, yesterday, as we saw, knocking out the defending champions. And definitely a team to watch. Mid lane, a lower dance, still trying to create some space here for resolution, hanging back there in case QO goes too aggressive onto the Storm Spirit. He's still here to find level six in the side place. He's got to be careful here. That Storm taking a heavy bit of damage. Top lane, Bristle, able to find himself. A little bit more of the XP, getting himself up to level four, but always want to fly here on the Witch Doctor. Getting the pull through to the side. Mid lane as well. A little bit of a wrap round here from Mark Febby. Maybe seeing if he can tether up to look for something. They've got the slow here with the trap oh, for QO. They're going to try and dive for this. They've got to be careful though, because the lower dance resolution are ready to try and turn around. QO. Yeah, he's got this double damage rune. He has got refraction in a second. He's going to go back in with it. There's your refraction. Moving back in with a boosted damage. Trying to see if he can find anything, but he can't quite. Gets the slow onto resolution but not quite able to dive deep enough for these two, but still putting a heavy amount of... Oh, look, at he's... Oh! Maybe seeing if you get a, a cheeky side blade there, but it's not going to happen. Aloha Dance played that exceptionally well on the Winter Wyvern. It looked like Resolution was in a lot of trouble with the slows, the double splinter blast he got out, and I think he also used the Arctic burn in that situation. Very well done to keep his body safe. Now he needs to be careful. Right, look at this round run for nuts. Nah, he, is. he is hanging around on incredibly low health, gets hexed up, Kua comes in with a finishing blow. Now the TP from the Witch Doctor, is this going to work out for the side? They did find the Lion here in return, so it's a one for one. Kua is going to be able to get himself out. But uh, obviously favoring the side of MP, the fact that they get a kill under the belt of TA. And he gets a very key item here. Uh, these face boots are going to help him a lot. The last attempt they had on Resolution would have been successful if he had the phase. Now, of course, Resolution is going to hit level 6, but it's still just a way for him to force Resolution to use mana, to chase down other kills, and in general have more of a, a presence in, in fights. Yeah, they're putting so much pressure on the mid lane Empire with three heroes hanging around. They realize that QO is going to become a big, big issue and know that something needs to be done about it. 39 for 18 at the moment. One kill under his belt. The TA is, is going to definitely spiral out of control unless Empire can put a stop to it anytime soon. And that's just something annoying about playing lane against TA, you know? It's, it's a very different kind of lane matchup because you need to be constantly aware of your, like, micro... Like, you can't really say micro position. You get the idea, right? How you're positioned relative to creeps. Look at Resolution just being bullied out of lane by QO. It's, it's a very frustrating matchup when you're behind because the TA will feel like she's on top of the world and can just constantly just go for you. And, that's what you want to avoid happens in this kind of lane. Resolution, he's flat out just being destroyed by QO. 45 to 22 against 23 and 3. Resolution can't even go to the creeps right now. He's got to be so careful here in this mid lane. And uh, as, as we saw, as the camera's flicking around, we've got a lot of stacks being created. Ancient stacks here on the side of the Radiant. And uh, uh, big stacks coming out in both, both teams' jungles. So we'll see when they're going to close out. The stack. He's going to walk over a trap now. Oh, though. Resolution getting caught out by the wrap round for nuts. And QO here with the slow to lower dance. The lower dance, he's got the Arctic burn. Will be able to fly himself up to the high ground. Turns around for a bit of a slope. Top lane, silent. Trying to move in onto March. Stealing again a large amount of damage. 105 this time. Making it very hard for March to find anything. He has now got 16 CS on the Bristleback. So he's found a little bit of space to find something. 
It's but not still. all that bad for him, actually. I'm surprised yeah. he's finding this. Uh, of course, you can always try to farm with Coil Spray, but when Razor has sapped 60 damage from you or more, you can easily outlast hit your Coil Spray stacks uh, as well on the creeps. So, March is getting his. Now, the hero I'm keeping my eyes on right now is the Queen of Pain, because I think Yoku, with some good rotations, can have a really major impact in this game, as mentioned earlier. And he's definitely found the levels. The offlane for Empire has just flat out gone way better than that for the Radiant. And this is where they... They need to give their mid lane a comeback via their off lane this time, which is, you know, most of the time kind of unusual, I would say. But when you have a level seven Queen of Pain minute minute eight in your off lane, you know, you know she's going to be be doing stuff. I'm actually going to let March try and take away some of this stack here with the Quill sprays being tethered up here by Febby. It's going to be okay. For oh, the look time. at QO just. He's harassing both of them at once. Ah, you see, so he's reaching onto level 9 now with that meld hit as well. Aloha Dance getting dangerously low. Resolution actually zipping in here. They're teasing QI. They might even try and go for it, and they're going to get it with a wraparound from Yoku. There's your offlane rotation you're talking about with a Sonic Wave onto two. Double kill for Empire. Yeah, they got exactly what they wanted. They, they wanted QO to try to commit a little bit too far up. They already have the sentry placed in the middle of the river, so meld did not save him from the aggression. He ends up paying here. And there's kind of no trade-off, maybe a little bit. KP is doing some pretty good damage on the bottom tower with his Lina. Going for treads into Yules, as it would look right now. And I'm very curious about which direction they take this Lina in. I think a lot of the times when we see Lina is being played in the safe lane, um, I feel like teams forget about the ability to make this hero into an actual right-clicker late game with Fiery Soul, which is absolutely ridiculous for attack speed. But in this game, they already have it covered. So I think he needs to go for a utility caster build. Um, I would like to see the Yules being Yules into maybe straight Ags, perhaps a blink along the way, and then maybe a refresher. Talking just about really Lina. hard burst. They're smoking in on her three of them. They've got the Winter's Curse available if they need it. They're just going to zip straight forward onto KP here. Yoku comes in as well. Makes short work there of the Lina here on the bottom lane and putting Yoku now on a killing spree on this quad. Tower is under attack. This is uh, certainly looking good for Empire in that sense. QO trying to use the space here to get some pressure onto the mid. Still sitting at the top of the net worth here on the TA. Coming up to 1900 gold. Has yet to, to build into his first item. Getting a slow here onto, onto always want to fly, but he's just going to drop the death warden with the bounces. Actually bouncing towards QO. Silent coming in as well. Does get stunned up with QO. Only just living here through that one. Does get the refraction out to avoid the maledict damage. Mid lane. Nuts is going to fall though. And now Silent. He's looking for more. Stealing the damage of QO. QO, can he quite find it? The bounces. The cars get down the plasma field. QO's down. The resolution coming in. They'll find Febby as well. Double kill for Silent. Empire coming out on top every time here. 11 minutes in, 9 for 2. Always want to fly, just played that perfectly. The setup he finds first off with the Death Ward, forcing the TA out, just making... Putting TA in a position where she has to get the help from Io, and then once they tandem together up in the up in the jungle, he also gets an incredible cast. That was beautiful to watch for him. Always want to fly in that situation. Very well done. Seeing at the top lane, Febby, just tearing up with March. Still yet to hit level 6 here on the IO, halfway through 5. He's coming in to harass Yoku, but uh, at the moment it is certainly Empire here with the lead, and they've done a good job at helping out that Storm in that mid lane, in which he was having a pretty nasty time, of course, against Kyo's TA. But we'll, uh, we'll see what they're able to do. Obviously, the fact that Bristleback cleared up that ancient stack here for the team, it's put him in a pretty good place now. Level 8 on top of the treads, coming up to in fact, he's just purchased, what's he going for? So he's picking up the chain mail here, so. So we'll see how he decides to progress with his build. But, I mean, what's the play now for MVP? Do they, do they need to just be a little bit more careful in their engagements? Are we going to see them go very aggressive as soon as the relocate comes online and look for pickoffs? I think they want March to get his mech and then look for fights. It's really, it's really crucial whenever you have a Wisp on your team that you get that mech. It's just so much heal for, for March himself. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. QO will at the round the same time and probably also have a desolator. So those two abilities can be or items can be combined up nicely as Aloha Dance is super dead. Gets Indeed. caught. Good radiant observer ward finding him out there. Hex from nuts. Follow up from KP. Well, that's gonna find KP indeed with resolution zipping in. They'll take the Lena kill. Empire finding something in return. QO. Contemplating where it's going. He's actually gonna go for always wanna fly here. And Wish Doctor on his own isn't gonna be able to do anything. Three Double shot. kill here for QO. And now resolution silent and Yoku moving in. They do have a sonic wave available here on the quad. He's gonna go up to the high ground here, get the slow onto nuts. Resolution moving forward now to the high ground. Trying to do what they can to control him. We'll get the slow onto nuts. Nuts is gonna go down. QO will be able to get himself away there with the haste rune. But again, Empire finding both the Lena and the Lion. 
He's losing the Witch Doctor there. Top lane silence coming back into farm, which was going to scare March right back. And Nuts, Nuts panicking a little bit there with the, uh, with the Earth Spike. On the other hand, if it lands on Resolution, maybe they can kill him with Earth Spike Finger and a Meld Attack. But at the same time, if he had held on to that and played it a little more defensively, maybe Empire Overextend, then take the Earth Spike and play in. Kyo is actually not going Deso first. He went for the Blink. So probably looking to put on the aggression onto Wyvern really early on with this. Just jump in, force Cold Embrace, and take it from there. Or maybe even better, finding Witch Doctor when he's not together with the Wyvern. We saw him three-shotting him in the river. Yes. So it should be very, very easy for him to bring down Keeper. Going to try and go in potentially here. Silent does have the mech complete, so Empire in a very good place to fight. They want to go past the tower. He has got backup as well, but at the same time, MVP, they're moving in smoke. And of course, with that blink from QO, should be able to try and catch Empire off guard, but Silent's going to be relatively tanky. Is he going to be tanky enough? That's the question. Jumping straight in, they're looking for Silent, they're bursting down. Doesn't get the chance to use the mech here. Fantastic initiation there from Phoenix, but now the death ward onto QO. QO, he's got to kill the Witch Doctor, no! The Witch Doctor kills him! They always want to fly in, they'll fight the IO as well. A lot of hard times caught bracing himself up. March is going to be able to find the kill with the help of the stun from KP, and it's going to end a three for three. There may be more resolution, he's not done yet. Moving forward onto KP, KP trying to shoot it out, but Yoku's there with the double kill. March trying to wake up with the quill spray, this will be a buyback. IO actually coming here, trying to help out March in this fight. Can he turn this one around? Resolution's still got mana to zip away. There was, oh, he got it, he got it. IO got the queen of pain. He got it, he got her mega kill streak. The buyback from Febby there with the spirits doing it for the team. What an IO buyback. He got like no gold out of it though because he just bought back. But uh, you're killing the it's worth it every it time. On though, the screen, sure. It's a 714 gold gain, but that is not the case. We got almost nothing out of that, but still, I guess it's worth it to get that Queen of Pain kill. But he would have loved to get the full gold for that, of course. Would have given him. I'm not sure what he's actually aiming for in this case. Probably gonna see him getting a Glimmer Cave as his first. I don't know if you can call Glimmer Cave a major item, but for an IO it is, I guess. All right, he'll take the tower instead. Well, mid lane Q in a lot of trouble here, going a little bit too aggressive, too close to the tower, and Empire to capitalize on that and get the deny as well. Q just overstepping the mark there in the mid lane. All right, 8 to 16 now at the moment, top lane. We are seeing the side of Phoenix hang around here. That's trying to get some warding down. So he's going to be fine for the time being. To, uh, he's got the quap up there, but hasn't got the Sonic Wave yet available. Not looking to jump back in bottom lane. Maybe moving in here. Always want to fly. He's around here with Silent on the Razor. March on his own. And also Resolution coming down the river here as well. You can, so, of course, March. He's got to be careful on this Bristleback. And they're going to go from here. He's all alone. Always want to fly. We'll move in. And now it's Resolution zipping forward. March. Standing alone for too long with the death board as well from Always Wanna Fly. Bristleback just going to evaporate. No backup there from the side of MVP. When March plays Bristleback, he's not used to dying this fast at minute 16. With the other games we've seen from MVP, his Bristle hasn't been counterpicked that hard. So you can easily get to a false here. feeling of safety. There is going to be the static link available. Oh, with the backup from the stun from KP. Febby there with a relocate. Very nicely securing the side of Phoenix, that kill. Resolution here with an Invis rune. Is he going to try and fight this? He's got the backup of Yoku. Yoku's got a Sonic Wave available. QO and KP sticking around. Resolution's going to go straight for KP. Look for the leader, but the KP will get the stun. Now the terror for Febby. KP's going to lift the Laguna Blade. He turns it around, takes down the storm. Now with the stun from Nuts, the Light Strike Array. KP finding himself another with the team there. And fantastic performance from Phoenix there in their own jungle. Uh, it costs. It costs. Empire so much that Yoku hesitates for a moment there. He actually has the opportunity to get a two-hero Sonic Wave, one of them on the Wisp, and the other one I think could have maybe been the Lena in that situation. I'm not sure if that was the target he could hit, but waits a little bit too long in resolution. Does Yoku go for something risky out. here? That's the question. He's got always want to fly around as well. This is not going to work. There nah, is no way. They're just going to let him take it. So we'll see QR here pick himself up the Aegis. This is the best thing that could happen for MVP. One mistake from Empire. Three kills, Roche and closing in on the next core item for Templar Assassin. Less than, how much is that remaining? 1,600 gold remaining for the Desolator, if that is the choice for QO. I think it has to be. I don't think you can go BKB first here. He needs to output the damage. So the Bristle isn't yeah. doing too much of it for now. Winnings come in on the mid lane, gets the pressure on Silent. Now with the Static Link moving in onto QO. Not gonna dive too deep for this one. Has got the backup here of Yoku. And always want to fly, Lower Tops moving in now on the wipe, and they've got the Winter's Curse available here if they want to try and make a jump. But at the same time, MVP, they've got backup hiding in the wings. 
Empire. Just going to try and hold their position for the time being. It's actually the full five man now of Empire converging around the mid lane. Have we seen the Winter's Curse yet this game? Uh, not, not, I don't think we've seen, uh, not in a, a, a big kind of uh, team fight winning one yet coming out from. Have we seen one at all? I can't remember. It's weird because he's almost level 9, and usually at this point the curse has been used once or twice because it's such a good Bottom ability. Bottom lane, they want to try and go for Yoku. A blink into the tree line is incredibly low. Mark can find the quill sprays. Oh, it's just not in range. Yoku's going to be alright. Mark turns his attention towards a lower dance. A lower dance with the cold embrace by himself. Inside. Yoku with the sonic wave trying to get Febby. Now a resolution going in to finish it off, but Febby, he's trying to just know that it's not going to be enough. He will go down. March unable to save him there with a mech, but Q is the one trying to clean up here. Diving deep, looking for always want to fly in the tree line. Will he find it? The urn. It was enough heals, but now the trap gives the vision, the cast, holding Kyo back. The Witch Doctor's going to escape for the time. One more hit will finish him off. Kyo finally finding the kill. Now Yoku, what's he going to be able to do here? He's going to hold the TA in place here with the Yules. But he's got to blink away. Can't stick around this Kyo TA, who now to the back of that fight, coming up to the amount of gold needed for that second Mithril Hammer. And this, this TA is getting out of control soon. We just saw the first Winter's Curse of the game, and it was an... He used it way too late. Io and Bristleback just got away from each other, so it dealt zero damage, just held Io in place, and Bristle was zoning them out anyway, so kind of a, a zero impact one there, and it's pretty unfortunate here for Empire as MVP again capitalized a little bit on the situation. I think they got a three for two exchange all in all there. I do believe maybe it was a two for one. That's a complete yeah, three for two, I think. Complete yeah, 19 and a half minutes in Deso Blink. This is how fast it can suddenly go when you take a couple of bad fights and the enemy team gets Roche. Kyo is starting to get really big. With this Deso, I think he can two-shot the Witch Doctor, who does not have a Ghost Scepter, isn't even remotely close. Same goes for the Wyvern, who has to have really quick reactions on the Cold Embrace. And even if he does, as we talked about, there's both a Lina and a Lion with those very scary lasers. The resolution just seems to try and find some farm here in the jungle, trying to finish off his Bloodstone. As the point boost to 1,700 gold on top of that in the Sol Ring. Um, and we still got to remember the Silence Farm here, of course, on this Razor, looking very good. He's only 400 behind the TA. They're actually going to smoke up here now, the side of Empire. Can they get a jump onto Phoenix? Moving towards the Ancients, Febby's actually going to dispel the smoke on the side of that Resolution Jitter who goes straight in for the IO, but they're going to be able to keep him alive here, holding them back, and they might even turn this one around. MVP, Deadfall has been dropped, but it's KP from the low ground, the Laguna Blade onto the side of the seen a lot of damage, the Deadfall from Always want to fly, it's not quite enough. Bristleback still and then finally goes down here, but he got himself a double kill before falling. Four heroes dropping on the side of Empire, and that was a smoke gone wrong. MVP are in such a good position on the high ground. It's like the best place right now for Lion to fight. And KP gets a really good angle there with the uh, with the Lina as well. So, oh, we're going for relocating go there. Base, yeah. He's just refilling his yeah. bottle. Surprised he didn't bring a friend. He could have refilled all of Lina's health and mana as well there. But, well, regardless, fight one for MVP. Yeah. Look at the graph now as well. A massive breakaway heading towards a 7,500 advantage straight off the back of that fight here for MVP. This could just be a day of upsets. I mean, we just saw Ehome taking a secret 2-0. Uh, in that series, I I felt like Ehome had a... Going into the series, I felt like people were favoring Secret too much, but I thought Ehome had a good shot at at least winning one game. But for them to 2-0 in the fashion they did, I think very few people would have imagined. And now, MVP going in as underdogs against Empire. They've, they've got a pretty good grip on this game right now. It looked like Empire had them counterpicked and cornered pretty well, and that the early game was going their way. But a couple of bad decisions is, is putting MVP in the driver's seat all of a sudden. QO, he got the desolate. When was it? Two minutes ago? Uh, yeah, he's 19, got 19 and a half minutes in. Yeah, so in the last two minutes, he's had a GPM of like 950. That's pretty good. I'm just going to hide here in the jungle of Loha Dance. Needs to be careful how close he comes to the side of MVP Phoenix. QO. And they do have these uh, Radiant Wards all around, so he sees the Wyvern here. Is it going to make a jump for it as of yet? Oh, he's actually moving in now. Oh, he's just going to take the, take the camp here. No one's going to make a jump as of yet. Always want to fly. He's looking for the D ward. It might be his last one as QO is going to try and move in here with the slow with the trap. The car's coming out. Is he going to bounce? They're able to create enough space between the two of them. Always want to fly. He's going to be cold. Embraced up and now silent. Moving in here with the static. Link getting a fair bit off of QO. He's already over the hundreds. They've got to be careful fighting into this one MVP. They just need to get themselves the hell out of there. Silent with 168 stolen damage. And MVP will just disengage for the time being. I think, Kyo, did Kyo miss his first melt strike or did he just not get it off? Because he had it on cooldown, I think, when he wanted to use it. And then the perfect time, perfectly timed cold embrace here from Aloha Dance saves the day for the Witch Doctor. Well, By the way. I mean, the fact that uh, even though Empire didn't find the fight, they were forced back. MVP are finding space here to find this tier 2 on the top lane. Seeing a bit of a split push coming out from Resolution on the Storm on the bottom lane. Tier 2 on the top will go down. 
resolution, just trying to work that wave in towards a tier two of his own. And, he, and he's, I think that's, yeah, the completed Bloodstone now finished on the storm. 23 is very slow for resolution standards. And it's even with four, two, and 10, right? You look at his kill death score and you feel like, okay, this is actually pretty decent. He could have it at sub 20 with that, but not in this case. His CS is simply too low. 88 CS at minute 23 in that mid lane. Uh, generally on Storm Spirit at this point in time, you want to at least have cracked the 100 and preferably a little bit more, but MVP has forced them to fight, to fight a lot, and in addition to that, he just had a very... He had a poor laning stage. It didn't go the way he wanted. Oh, and March now on the Bristleback. He's got a completed Crimson Guard on top of the mech 23 minutes in. Yeah, and speaking of bad laning stages, March had a really hard time in the early, early, uh, early, early game as well, and now... He's pretty much up to par with... Um, what do you want to have at 24 minutes with an offlane Bristle? Or maybe even a little bit ahead of it. Farm's looking very good for Phoenix. Resolution is going to get scouted out here, but I think with the lockdown in the neighborhood, March just starting to get this lane pushed in. And at the same time, they're looking towards the bottom as well, Phoenix. Getting that lane pushed in as well, see if they can find this final tier two from the side of Empire. And this time, I mean, it's, it's going to be fairly hard for Empire to try and jump in on this one, especially March with those items that he's got here to benefit the team in a team fight situation. They have to find a good uh, win to first. It's. It's been the key ability that's been lacking in this game so far for them. They haven't really been able to find the angles, but now with the Glimmer Cave, it's a lot more possible for a lower dance either to sneak in and do it, or at least to get a cold embrace into, into Glimmer Cave onto a friendly target that gets opened on. Moving in now. Give the tower up for free. Okay, bottom lane. Nuts, he's going to blink in on this one, and now with the relocate, they're going to be able to control resolution, bringing in Cure with a damage! Blowing up the Storm Spirit. Not a chance in hell for him there. This is a very classic ganking pattern you try to apply when you're playing against one split pushing hero is that you push a tower with four or five heroes together in the lane and it gives the enemy split pushing hero a false feeling of safety because he'll still be seeing the heroes in the bot lane as Lion jumps on him. Relocate, easy kill. Of course, it's easier with Wisp than it is with TB scrolls, but the concept is the same here in MVP showing good understanding of I want to fight, fight. Goku right going into the setup with the Yules, looking for the Io there, trying to force him away from March. Febby's going to look for the straight up TP, and he's going to make it as well. Febby's out of this fight. It's going to be March, they're trying to chase him, and they look for the Splinter Blast to connect. It won't do so. So he's going to be A-OK, -okay and Empire unable to find anything with that aggression. And meanwhile, Kyo is just farming. He is actually... So if you remember the game we... You probably do. It was 30 minutes ago. <laughs> remember the game of E-Home versus Secret, the second game. The TA of CTY got ridiculously farmed. I think that was a minute 27 Desolator, or sorry, uh, Daedalus he grabbed. We're looking at a similar timing here for QO. His net worth, he's just way ahead right now at minute 26. Only 350 gold to go. Very, very rich on the tempo. This is certainly going to be an issue for the side of Empire. I mean, they have got a lower dance, of course, with the Wyvern, with the Cold Embrace to help out against the TA in these fights. But it's just a question of whether it's going to be enough when it comes to a full 5-on-5. Five five. Roshan's going to be back up in 10 seconds. And of course, uh, well, MVP's lineup are going to be able to take it so quickly if they get their hands on it. Especially with the amount of damage and items that QO has now got on this TA. Okay, he's going to go for a Bloodstone. We're seeing this build... Uh more and more popular these, uh, in this tournament. It's kind of, I don't want to say it's become the standard for safe lane units, but it's definitely been picked up uh, on a couple of occasions. Yules into oh, Bloodstone. Go oh. for a resolution. He's going to find the Courier here, but oh, the Daedalus was what? delivered just in time. He they managed to get the Daedalus to Cuba. Now the, oh, the relocate forward. Oh, oh, which doctor? He's going to need another doctor. Oh, that was, oh, that was brutal. And out the back of it, they're just going to go for Roshan. And I don't know if Empire can do anything to contest this with a hero down. I don't know if they'll be able to do anything with a full line, but that's just the amount of power that Kyo has got behind him now. And this is, they even have an IO to back him up. That's yeah. the crazy thing. They picked IO Bristle, but something I really like to see is when teams pick IO, sometimes you can combine it so that it has two good partners, maybe even three in the draft. Templar Assassin with Overcharge is ridiculous at pushing towers. So they don't necessarily have to pair it with March all the time since March can hold his own with a Crimson Guard, Plate Mail, and Mech and they can just overcharge QO, and he can get the job done really, really quickly with that attack speed, and of course the tankiness from Here we go, up to the high ground. Right now. What can Empire do to stop this one, the tier three? Falling incredibly fast here, Silent moving forward, we've always want to fly. They've got all their ults available. It's gonna blink back here. 
Static Ring is going to be down, and this is going to be a good opportunity for Kimura to just go back in, starting to hit away. Rules on to Razor. It's going to set up the Light Strike Array, but it's now Empire oh, moving forward. on the side, he got caught. Oh, oh, only just getting himself back up to the high ground here, and off the back of that, MVP might be ready to go. They know that the Storm's down. He's had to go back to the Fountain. But QI a little bit too low. Okay, they're going to keep QI safe. They don't want to waste the Aegis as of yet. Yeah, they blew the Finger of Death from Nuts there as well, so... They're going to take him back to base. Okay, bringing QI back. Yep. Getting themselves top back up for round two. Also seemed like a little bit of miscommunication there as far as the Razor went. Mm -hmm. QI went for the meld attack, and at the exact same time, he got dueled by KP. So a little unfortunate there for MVP that they... They don't manage to combine their abilities perfectly. But they lost nothing either, so... You can just... Keep playing it safe for a bit now. The top lane is starting to get some momentum here for Empire, and this is probably something they will want to address, but they don't have relocate to just take care of it, so they would have to go for an actual hard TP back to the top lane. For time. I think they'll be content if they can find... Oh, Razor could be oh, trouble here. Yeah. There's March moving forward to Silent. He's got the cold embrace here. He's going to be fine for the time being. If you're going to be thrown down, now the Temple in a very nice position here, doing a bet with the Sonic Wave. Fairly getting low, but they've already killed the Wyvern here at the side of MVP, and they're looking for more Silent. He gets stunned up. March trying to move, and he's just two down. Taking resolutions out of matter, and there's a the damage for Kyo enough. He's trying to get himself in. We'll get it. Double kill for Kyo. One, two. He needs one more. That's going to do it. No, he needs the final one. He's got it. It's a triple kill for Kyo. Now Silent chasing down March. Will find the kill with the help of Yoku and Resolution. And it's in fact just Kyo that's left alive. Will be able to blink himself out. Resolution is not happy. He wants Kyo dead. He's going to be able to. Well, it's going to be the hell. The Karina playing that with the yours. Holding Kyo in place. Kyo just trying to turn it. He's got the Aegis. And they've got to kill him a second time here. They've got to be careful. Kyo is a bit of a glass cannon. He does a hell of a lot of damage here. He's just going to try and meld himself up. They haven't got detection. And Kyo, he's out. Blinks away. No! Oh, 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 he tries to find Yoku as well. Won't quite get away with it. And Resolution trying to zip forward. He's only got a little bit of mana. Oh, oh, you want to go? Oh, oh my god! And now Kyo is going for more. He's looking for Silent. He's going to get him. What? Oh my god! Double kill for Kyo. This man, you, you can't kill him. You don't want to kill him because he'll turn around. He'll kill you. He'll kill your friends. He'll kill family <laughs> my goodness this man is he's a maniac and now he's gonna go for the base fortification coming out for the side of empire he's, he's just ready to go oh, yoku you know okay, what happened like, yeah, you've got to blink yourself off. away he's fine he's got refraction he's good no. okay. oh laguna blade there that's definitely got to not. okay he's overstepping the mark this time qo's gonna go down march on the front line febby actually doing a fair bit to a hard dance and kp with the stun onto silent febby just helping kp get himself out it's gonna be a re-really code back out march is on his own now and he's, he's in a bit of trouble. He's going to need some kind of help. I don't think it's on its way. He's been left alone, zipping in. They'll find the kill. And OK, they do kill Kyo. So they find a lot of things in return, but it's still Kyo. He's still okay, about 4K ahead of the Queen of Pain. It's very easy after getting a double kill like that to just feel like there is yes. nothing that can stop you at all in the game. But there is a limit. Going to knock on the enemy tier 3 tower with Essentially, I think that was a 2 and 4 situation against plenty of uh, damage over time effects to remove a fraction. Is, is not the play in that situation for QO, so... Resolution. A little bit too excited there. to be careful of Nuts with the blink here. He's going to go straight in here. There's a TP from the Lina. Corn Embrace. I don't know if that's going to help him. He's been Glimmer Cape Top as well. They've dropped a sentry. They've got the vision. But now he's just going to zip straight in. Resolution looking to pick off Febby here. Can he find the kill? No, Febby with the Glimmer Cape. He's going to be okay. Resolution can't find that kill. Gets himself away. Oh, he's actually, oh, what's he found? He's found Nuts. Nuts. Oh, looking for the stun. Resolution actually out of mana here. Nuts should be able to chase this. He's got a blink in a couple of seconds. He's screwed. He's got oh, no mana at all. Yoku is there. The Yoku needs to do something to help him. Yoku picking up an Invis Rune, bottling up as well. They've got a Sonic Wave. They should be able to do something if they want to try and fight. There's your Sonic Wave bringing Nuts slow, but he gets tethered up by Febby. And KP and Nuts, they want to look for more. Moving into the Dire Jungle here. Relocate. They're going to relocate in for oh, it's Nuts with the Finger. It's the global Finger. The low heart does getting low. He's got the Cold Embrace. He's going to be fine with the time being, but the always want to fly, getting picked up by Kyo, and now Aloha does, he's going to go down as well. Two heroes falling on the side of Empire, and I've got to say, the IO performance has been fantastic this match from Febby. I was about to say, that was a really good play from Empire. The way they bailed out Resolution there was actually really good. Of course, the relocate will catch them on the way back as they thought they were safe. Now their barracks are under attack. I don't know if they can hold this. They have to buy back the Wyvern. They've got to get it back. At least to have a chance. Oh, Resolution, he's trying to do it with the Vortex, pulling him back. Arch leading forward here. Just harassing them back. He's two down, tanking the Bristol back. They've got to try and fight around him here. Oh, the lower does. One, two. Kyo finds the kill. He's going to look for Silent. One, two. It needs the third one. Fourth one, maybe. There we go.
we go. He's got it. It's a double kill, and now he's going to move in for more resolution. Trying to get back with the stun. The light striker res a triple kill for Kua on the TA. Now he'll go for the ranks here with the back of his team. Three heroes down on the side of Empire. None with buyback available. Yoku. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to blink away from that one. They're going to look towards the tier three in the mid. And Empire just falling apart at this point. This this could be the winning push from MVP. Or at least a, a very damaging one if they find a further further set of racks. It's going to take pretty much a miracle at this point for Empire to be able to hold their base. They're going to... Oh! oh okay. He's got it! He's got it! GG! Save him! Save the Witch Doctor's humility! Don't, don't put him up against this anymore! It's over! MVP take game one in an incredible fashion, Sin. That was absolutely phenomenal. I actually, I personally feel like Empire had a really good draft against them, so they, they flat out just got outplayed. They lost their mid lane really hard, and MVP just, you, you know, this is what I was saying, they're playing like a team that has so much confidence. QO, had, in some cases, had like too much confidence, but overall, just...